Well, this is exercise 7.2. This one is looking at compound events and the addition rule. So now we're just starting to get a little bit more, more complicated. We've got multiple things happening which changes our probability. Notice we're going to start using this sort of uh, uh, set theory, the funny looking U thing there meaning the union of, or in other words A and B joined together, the upside down one meaning the intersection of, what's common to both. And that sort of uh, that sort of symbolism is used throughout. I just did make this note there that in your book on page uh, 90, 293, there's a, a, an issue there. The question won't make sense if you try to use that example without realising that there's an error. Also, some definitions: a compound event. It's more than one event. Flipping a coin or or a dice, uh, throwing a coin twice. So flipping a coin and a dice, or throwing a coin twice. Um, that's, that's a compound event. Um, Complements. Now this is very important to get, it's very easy, but uh, you're going to need to understand that. If the probability of something happening, we call that A equals 0.3, then we know that the probability of an event occurring is 0.3, then it means then that we know the likelihood of it not occurring. Because the probabilities add up to 1, if the likelihood of it occurring, a probability is 0.3, then the probability of it not happening must be 0.7. This is called the complement of A. And we write it with a little dash there, A dash. So if PRA, the probability of A is 0.3, then PR A dash, or a good way to say it when you're reading it is PR of not A is 0.7. And I'll talk about that quite a bit, saying the probability, that little dash there being the probability of not whatever it is we're talking about, in this case not A. Here's the addition rule, and this is a useful one uh, too. The probability of the union of two events is equal to the probability of the two events minus the probability of the intersection of those two points. This is well illustrated using a Venn diagram. We might just uh, click to that and do that in a moment. Um, but first, just let's make sure we understand what union means. Uh, so this word here, or, is often associated with this one or the other, um, and by that we're meaning. Look, let's let's uh, imagine if we're going to divide the student into I don't know boys and girls, and uh, or males and females, and so it this would mean a male or a female. We're going to pick one person. It could be a male or it could be a female. So we're drawing from both groups. This one here, though, uh, in fact, I've used just a terrible example with males and females. <laughs> The intersection of the two, one is both male and female. Yeah, that doesn't work, does it? Right, so it would be something that would belong in, uh, in both groups in there. Okay, I'm just going to abandon that whole uh, illustration, I think. Do you get the point? All right, it has to be in both groups. Let's look at the Venn diagram. That'll explain it better. So a Venn diagram first. We've got some various things going on. In A, or event A, whatever it is, notice there's this group here who are part of whatever A is, and this group here, this is, this could be, uh, um, group A could be, I don't know, students in year 12, and group B could be students in year 11. Um, and so this group here, there's 20, they're just doing year 12 subjects. These five here, they're just doing year 11 subjects, but this 10 in the middle, it means they're doing some sort of mixture of both. So these would probably be year 11 students who are doing a year 12 subject. So that's your intersection point, the one in both groups, they're both in year 12 and in year 11 if they're doing a year year 12 subject, for, for example, whereas these students know year 12, just pure year 11, these ones here, pure year 12, and these ones here, what would these be? Well, they'd be students not in either of those groups for whatever reason. So let's have a look using this as to some possibilities. So we see here why A and B, the union of A and B, in, um, in there, it'd be students that could be drawn from either group in here. And it equals the probability of group A, there's 30 of them, plus the probability of group B, well there's 15 of them, minus the probability of the intersection of the two, which is 10. Now why we have to put that's pretty clear, because this probability group here, PRA, includes this 10, and this probability B includes the 10 again. So by doing this here, A plus B, we've actually put the 10 in twice. So 
this here takes it out once. So that includes the 10, that includes the 10, that takes one of those 10s out. So that's the addition rule. We can rearrange the addition rule, by the way, by taking this, putting it over here, this one over here, and just rearrange it, which can be a useful uh, way of writing it. So let's have a look at this Venn diagram and explain a couple of things. Uh, what's the probability using this of A in union with B? Now first of all, how many things are there all together? Well, you add up 20, 10, 15 and 5, adding up the whole lot together, and we end up here, there are 50. And so whatever we do is going to be out of 50. Now the probability of A in union with B is all of A and all of B, or in other words, this plus this plus this, making sure we don't add that in twice. So 20 plus 10 plus 15, 45 out of 50. And so the probability of A union B is 45 out of 50. You would, of course, cancel that down, but we're just going to leave it in that form for the minute. What about the probability of A dash union B? In other words, not A in union with B. Everything that's not A in union with B. Well, if it's not A, it knocks this out. If it's not A, it's going to knock this out too, because even though it's in B, it's actually part of A. So that's gone. So that 30 have gone. What's not A? Well, 15 is not A, and 5 is not A. So what's 15, uh, what's not, everything not A in union with B? Well, it's all the rest. So 15 plus 5, 20 out of, uh, out of that. So, that's 20 out of 50. What about this one here? A in union with not B. So again, we go up here, and what's not B? Well, that 20 is not B, that's B, that's B, that's not B. So your 20, your 5, and your 20, they're the only things that are not B. So what's A in union with not B is 20 plus 25 out of out of 50. Hmm, what about this one here? Not A in union with not B. Everything that's not A in union with everything that's not B. Well, everything in here is B, everything in here is A, so the only thing that's not A and not B is this 5 here. So that's 5 out of 50. Right, so that's the use of that with union. We use a similar thing when we're looking at the intersection of A intersecting B. What's that? A in intersection with B is just what's in here. A and B, the intersection of them exists in here. So that's 10 out of, uh, out of uh, where have we lost it? Oh, there, sorry, 10 out of 50. What about everything that's not A intersecting with what's B? So what's everything that's not A? That's A, that's A. So this is not A, and this is not A. Okay, so it's this and this. But it's what out of this and this intersects with B, well the only bit that's common is this bit here. So that and that is not B, but what, what about that in intersection with B, well it's only this bit here. So it's 15 out of 50. And we use similar reasoning for the rest of it here. I might just look at the last one. What's not A in intersection with not B, uh, well it comes down to that's B, that's A, so it only actually leaves leaves the 5, and uh, that's the only thing that uh, is not A and not B that intersects with itself, so that's that's that. Um, that was Venn Diagram, and it's a, a handy way of representing things, and probably one of the most common ones you'll use. There's also probability tables, also called Kano tables, just to upset everybody, and so these are an equivalent way of writing what's on a Venn Diagram. So if we look at here, for example, a and B, we would write in here whatever the result of A and B is. Well, of course, that is A and B together. These are all intersections. And so the what's PR intersection B? Well, we did that in, the, in uh, this here. We've already done that down here, so I'm not going to go through it again. But the intersection of the two, and I've written this, rewritten this table here, down here. And so what's the intersection of A and B together? Well, we know it's here, so 10 over 50 would go here. What you do notice along here, though, is that all of these ones here 
and all of these ones here, when you add them up across this way and across this way, the total will come to 1. So that's something that's not so obvious in a Venn diagram. Here, this total here has to add up. So all of these probabilities here have to add up to 1 both ways. That's perhaps one thing useful. So I'm not going to repeat all that again. We'll go through that again. Uh, mutually exclusive events. Think about what that means. Mutually exclusive. Exclusive means not including, doesn't it? So you've got A and B and somehow they exclude each other uh, from something. So there's no intersection whatsoever uh, between the two. Something when one happens the other can't happen. There's no intersection of any sort. Some ways of displaying the sample space. This is a very useful tool to use provided there are not too many outcomes because otherwise these become very messy very quickly. But if you wanted to know something like this, you're going to throw a coin twice, what could possibly happen? Well, you know that you throw the first coin, you can get a head or a tail. Let's say we've got a head with it, and the second one you can get a head or a tail. So here you can end up with a head and a head, or a head and a tail, or this one here you give a tail and a head, and a tail and a tail. We see these are basically the same outcome. So you can quickly tell, well, the possibility of getting two heads is one out of four. Uh, getting a head and a tail in any order is one there and one there, two out of four or a half, uh, and so on. So that can be quite useful. Lattice diagrams, less commonly used, but uh, useful if perhaps things are bigger. What are the possibilities of rolling two dice? Well, on the first roll, do you get one, two, three, four, five, six? On the second roll, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one here represents this one here represents getting a four on the first roll and a three on the second roll. So this here is representing all the possible things that could happen. Useful in saying, you know, look, what's the possibility of getting a three and a four? Uh, so you look on here and say, well, okay, look, there's a three and a four, but here's a four and a three. So if the order didn't matter, there's actually two chances out of the total which is 6 by 6, 36, two chances out of 36, uh, a useful way of doing that. The outcomes table is another way of writing it here. What's the possibility of uh, uh, to do with heads? What's the probability to do with, with uh, or tails rather, on throwing a coin? Uh, number of tails, the probability is 1 out of 4, um, 2 out of 4 for getting one tail, or two, uh, 1 out of 4 for getting two tails as shown here. So these are the outcomes here and we just put the outcomes into a table like this. Uh, okay. So here are some applications of these. These are all pretty pretty straightforward, these problems here. It's asking you to use probability tables um, in the, the outcomes tables rather. It's asking you to calculate the probabilities using tree diagrams and things like that. So look it's really so straightforward I don't think I'm going to spend very much time looking at this uh, with you. Uh, I've tried to explain that fairly well as I've gone through. Um, here it's useful to put these together like this. I might just speak about this for the minute. Notice here we've got the probability of A. So what that means is if it's 0.27 it's this and this. is. So in the beginning we might not quite know what that is. The probability of this is 0.48 and the probability of that is 0.23, so we'll actually use this and said, right, well, 0.23 belongs in here, so what's out here, what's just B? Well, that was 0.48 minus 0.23, that's where I got that from, and 0.48 minus 0.27, that's where I got that from. And so you need to dissect these things in small, in small groups. That's my cat wanting me to throw a piece of paper for her. Um, same thing here, uh, except this one used the union of, and so we've used this rule here, which I flipped around so that I can work out the intersection law there, um, and uh, so on. I think the rest of it's pretty straightforward. This is getting a little bit more complicated here. Uh, I think I might just leave that one with you.